Is NASA gonna start a rideshare service? Will you rate your astronaut five stars? Why not more on today's... Moscow! Because they're in space, you get it. Good news, your next rideshare option is here. And it's... Uber again. Oh, but this time with NASA. Hey, Uber is partnering with NASA in the hopes that the company can offer rides in the small electric planes through the air above cities by 2020. This is different than what Elon Musk wants to do, which is rocket humans across the world at incredible speeds from city to city, Shanghai to New York, 30 minutes, Oh, oh your yeah. pizza's free, Shanghai style, baby. Mm, Sabaros. What? Uber's now proposed fully electric planes that would depart and take off from rooftop hubs scattered throughout the host cities. And the three cities Uber has chosen to start this service are Los Angeles, yes. Dubai, and Dallas the Dubai of Texas. So this would alleviate some ground traffic, but I wonder if it would just end up creating more air traffic, which we don't need. No, totally. I mean, we don't want to run into a situation like Back to the Future 2. Ah! <laughs> so you don't want someone to create an alternate timeline where Biff is corrupt, married to Mar Marty's mom, and Doc Brown is committed to an insane asylum? Why wouldn't you want that? No, I mean, I honestly just care about the part with the flying car traffic. I don't give a shit about anything else that happened to that dumb McFly dude. <laughs> Speaking of flying, move aside, right brothers, <laughs> dweebos. <laughs> Planes aren't just for the air anymore, they're for space. Yeah, more like shitty hawk. The China Whoa! Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation is developing a reusable space plane that'll enter service in 2020. Of course, big it, year. It's a big year for 2020. Mars 2020. Yeah. That first thing that we it's said. It's a great year for hindsight. The second thing. That of course, this isn't the first space plane, but there are two things that will set this one apart. The first one being that this Chinese vehicle will take off and land horizontally from a runway. What? And the second is that it escapes Earth's atmosphere and reaches orbit under its own power. Damn. Now that's a space plane. Mm. Other space planes only do one or the other. Lame. Ew, boring. What are you, salad? The ones that take off and land horizontally focus on suborbital flights, the most notable being Virgin Galactic ship, Spaceship Two. And space planes that reach orbit are launched off the backs of a rocket. You remember the shuttle? I do. <sighs> it's like my Titans. <laughs> Even the Air Force's X-37B space plane reaches orbit via rocket. One was launched on the back of a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket back in September. So <laughs> this new vehicle- I remember. He does. And this uh, new vehicle will be a huge leap in the application of this technology from two separate standpoints. Count them, two standpoints. That's Dos Standorinos, neighbor. We hope to see this plane operate successfully, but in the words of one of the wisest men who's ever lived, Twice the pride, double the fall. Are you making more Count Dooku references? <laughs> no one said Count Don't Coo. Boo. Count Buku? Stop it! Do it. And finally, we're wrapping up this episode with some updates on self-driving cars. There have been so many updates coming around in the time. Now there has been so much news coming about about the time. Now there's the the. There have been so many new things coming out about the advances in self-driving technology lately that we were gonna do an entire episode on it, but then, nah. <laughs> Hell no! So instead, we have a roundup for you, starting with Waymo, the autonomous vehicle division of Alphabet, which owns Google. Waymo has reached the next step in driverless technology by putting completely driverless cars on public streets in Arizona over the past few weeks. Uh, <laughs> driverless cars. Okay, what's next? Automated customer service lines? Speak to representative, you dumb Roby. Also, European car maker Renault showcased their self-driving car technology that's able to react to obstacles as quickly as a professional driver. They are robots and they do have computers and they're better than you. Which is good to hear because the first self-driving bus in Las Vegas just went into service and got into an accident immediately. I mean, the shuttle operated perfectly. The collision was the fault of the very human driver in the other vehicle and nobody was hurt. Can you imagine this driverless shuttle trying to call its insurance? I mean, it's just like, Speak to representative. No, I Oh, I thanks, said, it went through please. right away because I'm also a robot. And before we go, it's time for your Musk See moment of the week. Musk See. Our Musk See this week is a little tease of Ooh. our next episode. Mm hmm. I'm going to make you wait for it.
Because we've been long awaiting the reveal of Daddy's Tesla Semi truck. <laughs> it is raging, and Musk took to Twitter to give us final confirmation, saying, <clears throat> Tesla Semi truck unveiled to be webcast live on Thursday at 8 p.m. This will blow your mind, clear out your skull, and into oh. an alternate dimension. Just need to find my portal gun. He keeps cementing himself, or trying to cement himself in the Rick and Morty canon, we get it. At first we were like, portal gun? Did dad just confirm Half-Life 3? But then we were like, we do it. crab, absolutely not. There's no way on earth that we'd ever get a third game in any Valve series. I mean, just look at Dota or So Team tune Fortress. in next week when we talk all about Elon Musk's semi truck. And Half that's Life. all the time we have for this episode of Musk Watch. Bye. Bye. Damn! Damn these unsynchronized hands! Thanks for watching this week's Musquatch. Remember to like and comment below with the best name for your flying taxi service. And if you've got any musky stories, send them our way at SciFile at Dan Casey at Nerd Musquatch. Musquatch. Ah! Sorry. Oh my. I put a sting on it.